Hi, yes, hello everyone, I'm Gavin.js, and today I wanted to talk about DNA. For a good while now, I thought it'd be really fun to try and make some DNA in Blender because, well, for one, I'm a big nerd. So I've wanted to make a lot of really cool sciencey renders. And DNA is just really cool, and it's a fun shape, and there's a lot of really interesting math behind it, at least for how we could recreate it in geometry nodes. It's also one of those things that you can get away with being fairly scientifically inaccurate when you're making. So there are a lot of different styles you can make. And I'm, I might do a few different renders here in the future with a few different styles of DNA. But for now, we're just going to kind of scatter some points and see what happens. Now, of course, I'd like to make this tool so that we can make DNA from a curve. That way it can have any shape we want and we have a few parameters to adjust. So one of the most important things we need to do is adjust the tilt of our Bezier curve. There's this wonderful video by Andrea Gianni. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce this guy's name. I apologize profusely if I butchered that, but he's made this wonderful tutorial all about tilt, rotation, and alignment on Bezier curves in geometry nodes. It's incredibly useful. I highly recommend it. Go check it out. I'm not going to go into detail as to how I applied that knowledge here because it's just such a good tutorial and I could not do it justice. So check it out. Links in the description. But anyway, all of this is based on that because what we need to do is instance a bunch of lines along our curve. And once we know that tilt, each instance will be rotated appropriately, which will start to create that double helix shape. The only thing is, of course, we only have those middle bars at the moment, and we need those outer edges. And my method for getting the outer edges of our DNA is to take the modulo of two, from all of the indices that we have from our instance geometry and delete anything that doesn't equal zero. And of course, on the flip side, we also need to delete everything that does equal zero. That'll give us two different sets of points that make up the edges of our DNA. Then what we can do is create a new mesh line and make sure that it has the same number of points as we have in one of our groups. That way we can use a sample index node to sample each position of each point in each of our groups <laughs> and set the position of each vertex of our new line to the position of each point. That will take just whatever line we generated and perfectly match it to the edge of our DNA. And of course we do this for both sides. That's why we took the modulus of two and kept both those groups. We just use both sets of geometry there and we can create two lines and then join them together. We can then of course join those with the original instances of those lines so that we have each edge and the bars in between. And we can take those curves and create a mesh with them and give each part its own radius so that we have a little bit more control over how we're making this DNA. And that's it, really. That is the core idea here and the basic structure for our DNA. But that's what we're going to use to create any sort of style of DNA you want. It's the basic structure and it'll fo follow any curve. There are some parameters that I've included here to make it so that you can adjust the number of twists in the DNA, the number of bars in the DNA, the thickness of both the edges and the bars, and a few other properties just to make it really customizable, including an offset, which I thought was really neat. That'll make it so that we can twist the whole DNA, both to line things up exactly how we want without changing the number of twists, but also to make it so that we can animate the whole thing twisting and create sort of a looping animation. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to really make this animation perfectly loop, which is really sad. I try really hard to make all of my stuff loop just because it's so much more satisfying, but it's definitely there included in the tool made at the beginning of the video. So that's really nice. In the future, I'll be able to make some looping animations. That'll be really cool. But from there, what we're going to do is just distribute points across all of the faces of our DNA. Then we can add just a little bit of motion to our points to make it feel a little bit more organic, make it feel a little more alive, even though that 
may seem a little silly. It just adds this extra layer of detail that I think is really cool and really sells the effect. We'll also want to give each point a random size so that there's more visual variety. And of course, then copy an icosphere to each of our points so that it actually renders. At this point, I do want to bring up one issue I had with this method of making DNA. Like I said, I wanted to offset the tilt so that we could get everything to rotate and animate nicely. And because of that, the geometry is constantly changing that we're then instancing points across. And so you'll be able to see some of our little points are popping in and out of existence. Currently, I'm not really sure how to fix that without completely recreating this whole tool. But I did have a solution for at least this render that worked decently well, and that was to create another bit of geometry that is just a straight line and use that as like the focal point of the render. And since it's a straight line, when we go to rotate it, we're not going to use the offset. We'll just use the normal transforms in the properties menu. And that way the geometry never changes, so it never has to recalculate where to distribute those points. It just makes it so that nothing pops in and out of existence. It's just essentially static geometry with some noise, so there are no obvious errors in the render. And then I did, of course, use the original curve and a few other curves in the background and the foreground that's all out of focus so that you get those interesting shapes and curves that feel more organic, but you can't see any of that popping because it's all out of focus. It's not a perfect solution, and I hope to fix this here in the near future, but for now, that was uh, essentially good enough. But I just kind of made a generic material. There's really nothing fancy here. I should have maybe put a little bit more work into that, but I think it looks good enough for now. I just took the position of each of our points and added that into the color. It's a little minimal. It doesn't turn out to make that big of a difference in the final render, but it just adds a little bit of noise and a little bit of chaos to the look of it instead of having everything look very uniform, which I think is a very useful detail. And that is it. We are on to the final render. That's really all I've got for you today. I hope this was at least interesting and provides some inspiration for some of your own projects. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. I also have a Discord now where you can reach out to me directly with any technical issues you have just because it's easier to assist people through a Discord conversation than in a comment thread here on YouTube. If that's interesting to you, the link is in the description. But that's going to be all for now, so I will see you all in the next one. Bye.